Hi, this is Jerry French. I'm at North 40 in Montana, and I'm here to tie some flies before we get to go fishing. So let's tie some flies. Um, I'm going to tie a trout variation on the summer sculpin, considerably smaller. Um, I've got a 25 millimeter shank, medium dumbbell eye, some 50 pound power pro, some peacock eye stub, some of my favorite micro strips, some predator wrap and some polar chenille and of course got to have a couple of rubber legs shank all prepped already so we'll just get right into it first things first little micro strip pulsator micro strip brown kind of sandy i like to make these things about a half inch longer than the overall fly so i have some wiggle room for the finish so I'm going to cut this off right here so I don't have to brawl with it. Little part back here where the tail goes in. I make sure that the tail passes the braid by about a quarter of an inch so you have some room to trim once we rig the hook. Let's use a little moisture here. Make sure it's divided. And then we'll tie this down right here. And it's important that these are tied in in the same place, the braid and the wing, because if they're tied in different places, one will limit the other's swing. Okay, so now that we've got the tail tied down, let's go right in front of it. We'll go with the little red polar flash. I think they might actually call this aqua hackle, but it's a lot like the polar chenille. Use a lot of polar chenille. Yeah, it's it's great stuff, and man. Missouri River fish love that little red accent. I'm sure they do in most places. I used to love it on the Kenai too. Trout, love trout. I'll go for four or five turns here, just slightly in front of each other, a little bit of a ramp because you want a little bit of a bump for what we got going on behind this here, and you want a good solid red accent. That's four turns and finished on the top. Pull that back. So now I'm going to go with a little bit of white ostrich. No modeling. It's about a quarter inch worth, which is probably five, six sprigs. And that is going directly on the bottom. And then pulled to the length of the loop. So it's basically like a little belly band. Let's cut this off. Party place. Let's come back here. Okay. And these are grizzly flutter legs, a little barred. I'm just using one on each side, installed the classic way around the thread. And these have their own little place just in front of the aqua hackle so they'll come out the sides tied in basically right where the eyes right behind the eyes right along the side of the shank a couple turns down through the middle and then I like to pull these guys back out of the way because I don't want them to get trapped by this next process Okay, let's get the thread back up front and we'll make a little loop. It's about a five inch loop. If you don't make a lot of dubbing loops, it's 
Really important to close up the bottom of your dubbing loop. Just a couple wraps around it, cinch it up tight so when you spin it, it doesn't break your thread. Because no one likes to break their thread. I know I hate it. Okay, let's run our thread forward. Let's move that loop back out of the way. I can see you got your special little board there. Yeah, my little assembly card here. And basically, this is so I have a repeatability. And the, it has a back station, a forward station, and a forward hackle. Each one of these translates into so many turns on a standard shank. Basically, it's four turns, about four and a half, four turns. And that, that way I, can, I have repeatability and I can control volume and proportion. Because that for me is about, the, that, that's really, really the tricks with a composite loop is just volume and proportion. It's easy to get too much stuff in there. So we're gonna assemble this a com composite loop here. A little bit of ice dub. I like the ice dub because it's crinkly. Well, we're just notice I took just very little. It's just a just a scrim, and I'm actually going to take some of that out of there. I've covered the two stations on my card, so I can fold it over. Now I'll take some of this Erie Emerald, first thing down, cut about an inch and a half. It's usually about two strokes of my scissors. Now I'm going to pull out all the extra long guard hairs and set it right on the center line. Set about 80-20, almost 90-10 in this case. And then from there, the predator wrap comes on a big braid, but I like to use it in working sections. Take and use half of this. And I don't care if it's pulled down or funky because it's the ends being different is a good thing. Cut this in half, basic working section. Basic working section. I'm going to cut a little bit off of this one. And I just spread it out in my fingers. And place it on here. 60-40 ish, 80-20. Adjust slightly off center. Fold that over. And I always push them down, and then that's ready to be installed in the composite loop. Put some dubbing wax on the 5 inch dubbing loop. And this is extra sticky, which it all works, but the extra sticky is kind of cool. It's extra sticky. All right. So, composite loop, the whole assemble. Composite hackle in the loop. What we're going to do here is spread this out. I'm going to wrap it all the way forward and past the eyes up in front. And all I'm doing here is just using my index finger to, as backing to spread out the material in my dubbing loop. And I'm kind of adjusting the length again because I don't want it to all be one length. Dubbing tool. So I pinch at the base of the thread here and give that a good hard spin. And then just watch it go down. Watch it spin up and stop it whenever you want. I usually go through once with a regular bodkin just so I don't break anything. And I love this thing. Really cool little dubbing comb. Really gets it right down to the thread. So it's not all clumped up. And you can see how sparse that, that loop is. Okay, so where we're at, threads all the way forward. Now we'll take a little bit of water and we're gonna fold this thing back. Find a neutral point first so it doesn't spin on you. And we're just gonna part it and pinch it. Now you could wrap it all forward without doing this, but the water part is really important. First off, if you're doing big flies, it fortifies the thread and it makes it stronger, which is a good thing in this case. And it also helps you create a legitimate hackle. It's all folded back right down to the thread. It's not a big clump of stuff and you can see where it's going. We're going to go right in front of those rubber legs. Tight up to the eye. 
under the eye. Thank you. I'll go around. Finish these wraps forward. Keep them nice and tight so you still have room to tie this wing down. There's a good landing for tying the wing down. A couple wraps. All right. So now that we've wrapped all the way forward, I'd like to take a little time here to separate this hackle. We're going to part it. You know, try to get it even. Like my mom would spend all that time trying to comb my hair and get the part just right. You know, make the top of your head numb. Yeah. Yeah. So just give that a little good spread there. And then we're just going to take this wing, we're going to pull it forward. We're going to pull it forward. Make sure nothing's trapped underneath it. Got a good 50-50 split. And I'll pull it really tight. And I also try to trap a little hair on the front side so there's a little bit of a puff here. And you'll see when I finish. Finish wraps. Cut this head off, swing off here, nice and tight. I like to make sure that this is pretty burly because without a cone protecting the front, which is on most of my flies, this this head will get pulverized a little bit, so it's it's important to make it pretty burly and good wraps and glue it good. Three wraps on the whip finish. Cut that off. And then we'll check the length. I like to cut these rubber legs. Roughly about the same length as the loop, just so they have some presence, not too long, which is about right there. Okay, let's get a little toothbrush action, because I like to just torture my flies a lot before they go fish. So, originally designed for summer steelhead and Alaskan rainbow trout. See what my, what these Montana trout think of that. We'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> that day how the sun did shine, it was the best night